Not all the victims were Jewish, but all the Jews were victims. From the years 1939 to 1945, millions of Jews, gypsies, homosexuals, and people not of the Aryan race were killed daily. Adolf Hitler was the organizer behind this genocide known as the Holocaust. Sonia Weitz was among the many that were tortured and degraded by the Nazis. Born in August of 1928 to her mother Adela and father Janek, Sonia thought her world was safe. Little did she know, her warm and protected home in Krakow, Poland, would soon be invaded. On April 28, 1939, Adolf Hitler made an announcement that Poland was now owned by Germany, which also meant they were to be invaded soon. During this time, Sonia, only 11 years old, lived with her sister Blanca and her parents Janek and Adela in a small Jewish section of the city of Krakow. Only months later, on September 1, 1939, Poland was invaded. When this happened, Sonia was with her father near a pastry shop when sirens alerted them to take cover. They were now in war. Eventually, 1939 faded into the following year, 1940. This year gave more limits in violence. In Sonia's home, they took away all of her Jewish property and business. Sonia says on page 9 of her autobiography, I promised I would tell, I remember the echo in the house. On the outside of Sonia's home, German soldiers were everywhere. In order to go out, you had to have a Star of David sewn to all of your clothing. That April of 1940, it was declared that by that November, all of the Jewish population was to be gone. When the murders were becoming more common, Sonia and her family left Krakow and went to Tarnow. After about a year, they left and returned back to their home in Krakow. On March 29, 1941, right after they returned home from Tarnow, Sonia and her family were put in the Krakow ghetto. In the ghetto, there were thousands of people with no space and German soldiers always guarding the gates. Sonia says on page 12 of her autobiography, I promised I would tell, Within the walls of this prison, our days were filled with hunger, filth, and disease. The ghettos were not a nice place, and Sonia and her family were stuck there for two years until 1943. That March of 1943, Sonia and her sister Blanca were sent to a concentration camp called Plazau. Only a month after they got there, they were assigned to work for Benno, a policeman. They were given sledgehammers, and they were told to break stone for gravel for the streets. Sonia says on page 32 of her autobiography, I promised I would tell, the work was very difficult, making my back ache. My legs and arms were numb. The clothing on my back was soaked with rain and sweat. But Sonia and Blanca stayed in Plazau until 1944. The December of 1944 is when Sonia and Blanca began their walk to the next concentration camp, Auschwitz. At this time, Auschwitz had no more gas chambers or crematoria. The next camp was Bergen-Belsen. At this camp, they would stuff too many people in rooms and typhus would spread like wildfire. Eventually, Sonia made it on a transport to a labor camp. Blanca was sick with typhus, but luckily she appeared healthy enough to be accepted for the transport also. In the cattle car, there were way too many people and no space. People would pile onto each other as more of people were put on. The surroundings were not good, and with Blanca so sick with typhus, Sonia felt stressed and was only 16 and a half. Many days later, the cattle car dropped Sonia, Blanca, and the rest of the victims off in Venisburg, the labor camp. Eventually, good news came, though. The Nazis had captured the Allied forces and put them in the camps. The captured Allied forces told Sonia and the others that help was to come soon. When they began hearing bombing, they knew the rumors were true. Sonia's hope went away when she got typhus. She was put in the sick barracks with the others who were sick. When Blanca heard rumor of another transport that included only the healthy, she rescued Sonia from the sick barracks. Luckily, Sonia made it on the transport. Our final transport from Venusburg to the infamous Mauthausen in Austria took 16 days. 120 to 140 women crammed into a sealed cattle car 
There was no air, no water. Sick with typhus and fever, weighing about 60 pounds and more dead than alive, my sister Blanca would prop me up against the wall and would pinch my cheeks so that the guards would not throw me away with the corpses. In order to reach Mauthausen, we had to climb the hills between the railroad and the camp. In our group of five, two of us were deathly sick, so the other three had to drag us along. Otherwise, the assess would have dumped us into wagons heaped with bodies, some dead, some still alive. May 5th, 1945, the American armies entered Mauthausen. The soldiers looked at us with disbelief and horror. Although the Allied leadership knew about the death camps by 1942, the soldiers were uninformed and unprepared. When the fog finally lifted that spring of 1945, and Nazi Germany was defeated, I was among the handful of the walking dead. For me, the devastation was almost complete. My mother was killed in the death camp of Belgrade. My father was murdered in Mauthausen only a few weeks before the Americans came. 84 members of my extended family perished. My sister Blanca and I survived the Krakow ghetto and five Nazi camps, Plaszow, Auschwitz, Bergen-Belsen, Venusburg, and Mauthausen. We endured the death march, boxcars, slave labor, starvation, diseases, and constant dehumanization. After searching for three long years, Norbert found an uncle in Peabody, Massachusetts. In May 1948, Uncle Harry welcomed us to the United States. 